Dealing with the endangered species list is typically not an easy task. Between the ecology and politics of recovering a species from imminent extinction, there are a lot of obstacles. Um, putting species on the endangered species list is difficult. Subsequently, taking species off the endangered species list is more difficult. The process itself is to create a recovery plan takes years and years to actually be implemented. Every single case in species that is dealt with, except for a particularly few species, has been a daunting task to actually save. Namely for two reasons. Firstly, the people in business impacted by the actions implemented are against the regulations or rules that affect them. Secondly, the species are just plain difficult to save. The latter reason is what is difficult about restoring the Northern Idaho ground squirrel. According to species.idaho.gov, the Northern Idaho ground squirrel was officially recognized under the Endangered Species Act in April of 2000. The Northern Idaho Ground Squirrel Recovery Plan was finalized in September of 2003. It took three years to create the recovery plan and get it signed off. Several revisions to this plan have been suggested throughout the history of the Northern Idaho Ground Squirrel Recovery Plan. In 2011, 2017, the U.S. Fishing Game, or the the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service attempted to revise the means of collecting information about the species, biology, habitat, and threats. Just recently, in May of 2019, 19 years after the recovery plan was finalized, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service stated stated that they are initiating the recovery planning and implementation process. The recovery planning and implementation process suggests that the state of Idaho will be involved in the creation of assessing the species and creating a plan to species conservation, which was the plan for the last 19 years. The question is, after 21 years of focused conservation on the northern Idaho ground, ground squirrel, why are they still on the endangered species list? Politically, the obstacles to recovering the northern Idaho ground squirrel is a relatively easy task. The estimated cost of recovery is $300,000 per year, which in government numbers is a very low number. The plan has been passed and it is only a matter of putting the plan into practice and achieving results, which is reliant on the ecology. The Northern Idaho ground squirrel is an interesting anomaly. Although they represent ground squirrels in Northern Idaho, they take up a relatively small area in only two areas, Valley County and Adams County, County Idaho. This is kind of ironic because Valley County and Adams County are not actually in Northern Idaho, but mainly make up uh, most of Western Central Idaho. These two counties together take up close to 5,000 square miles. This is a small habitat for a species, which is very isolated for such major genus. According to the Northern Idaho Ground Squirrel Recovery Plan, the species is threatened by habitat fragmentation, which separates populations and limits breeding diversity. The subspecies is also threatened by recreational shooting, poisoning, and competition from the much bigger Colombian ground squirrel. The objective to remove the Northern Idaho ground squirrel from the endangered species list to exceed the 1980 historic recording of 5,000 individuals. Once this number is reached, it is believed that they can successfully maintain their populations. 
At the time of the recovery plan, a count conducted by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in the New Meadows Ranger District, there were approximately 300 individuals remaining in 16 different habitats, most of which are located under private ownership. The largest population was estimated 200 plus individuals, which is the only location which is owned by the Forest Service. This shows that the government-owned land ultimately proves to be more prosperous for endangered species. The issue that government cannot intervene in privately owned lands is that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service cannot implement recovery strategies in these isolated habitats. Uh, Gavin et al. 1999 said, there's a high probability of genetic change in existing populations. This infers that the heritage of the squirrels still remain, but the species is slowly being combined into other species, practically being absorbed. Another big problem is that the Northern Idaho ground squirrel is practically absent for the majority of the year. A study conducted by Jensen in 1991 says that the Northern Idaho ground squirrel emerges in late March or early April and remains active above ground until July or early August. This only gives a limited time for males to find females to breed with, where many males fall prey to hawks or other predatory birds in the area. <laughs> Also, it's just plain difficult to locate and track these species. More than half of known habitat studies are unable to provide a population estimate. In the demography of population collapse, the Northern Idaho ground squirrel, Spermophilus brunius brunius, a study conducted by Sherman and Runge in 2002, is known that the largest forms of habitat lost is small forestation encroaching on meadows. The ground squirrel thrives around larger trees such as ponderosa pine and douglas firs, where they have room to maneuver but as dense forest grows and encroaches in the northern Idaho ground squirrel's habitat, population consistently decreases. This thick forestation comes from sire, uh, fire suppression and logging activity, which has allowed these subdominant trees to emerge and thrive due to lack of competition or disaster. So in conclusion, the Northern Idaho ground squirrel has a huge variety of factors that are counting against them, and human disturbance was enough to push this species towards extinction. It is difficult to help a species that pretty much won't help itself and has existed in a small geographic range that unfortunately has been pushed by development. Despite having a recovery plan, after 19 years, this species has not met its release criteria and will further require more intervention and support from local towns and the Fish and Wildlife Service.